In the first part of this course, we covered what the unified process and UML even are. Now we're going to make our first UML diagram together. I mentioned in one of the previous chapters that in the unified process, there are a bunch of different stages, inception, elaboration, construction, and transition. Making a use case diagram in UML falls somewhere between the inception and the elaboration stages. It involves overall general evaluation of a project, which is the inception phase, but it also requires more precise design of your system, which would be the elaboration phase. So let's see how to make a use case diagram that falls perfectly between these two stages. I mentioned that we use UML here at Open Classrooms so that the tech team can better communicate with other teams in the company. Everybody comes armed to a project, whether we're here at Open Classrooms or at a different company, with a story. There's a notion of what should happen within the system, of what different types of interactions should take place, what should happen if XYZ person does XYZ thing, and so forth. Let's bear in mind the notion of stories as we start to look at use case and use case diagrams. You're actually already familiar with this type of story, whether you realize it or not. Let's take, for example, a use case from a library. Everybody knows what a library is. You go there to borrow books, to return the books. Sometimes if you return a book late, oops, you get a late fee assessed. There's always a librarian behind the desk. And actually, this is the perfect simple type of system that UML would be great for modeling. Now, here we're not actually mapping out a diagram yet. We're going to write a textual use case, just some sentences in a paragraph, before we start diagramming, because it's actually a novice error to dive right into a use case diagram without writing out the use cases in text form first. You'll waste way too much time if you jump right into diagramming mode. The first use case I'm going to make is called Loan Book from Library. It's probably the most basic functionality you could find within a library. Here's what this use case might sound like. A borrower walks into a library wanting to loan or borrow a book. They search for the book, but do not find it. They approach a librarian and give them the name of the title. The librarian searches for the book and finds it. The borrower gives the librarian their name and account information. The librarian scans the book and lends it to the borrower. That may seem like a borderline too simple use case, but it's best to start with something rather simple because another novice mistake is getting too far advanced with use cases, jumping into diagrams that become extremely convoluted without actually understanding the basic mechanisms of the system that should underlie it. Now, a use case diagram, now we're gonna take this textual use case and actually jump into diagramming, should have four different elements. Actors, use cases, subjects, and include and extend relationships. Let's see what these actually are by starting to diagram. Our actors are the different players in our scenario. What might emerge from the use case that we wrote are that the two actors are a librarian and a borrower. Actors are represented by drawing stick figures with their names underneath. No need to be more creative than that. In the middle, we have what's called the system. So here on the left, I'm going to draw a stick figure for the borrower. And on the right hand side, I'll put a stick figure for the librarian. In the middle, I put the system, this big empty rectangle. It's the middle ground across which the actors interact and the system you're probably building if you're the developer on the project. We delineate the system with a border and the name of the use case inside. Now let's go ahead and add our first use case. We said that the borrower can search for a book. I'll add the use case as a circle or an oval within the system. I can simply write search book. Now who can perform this action, the borrower or the librarian? If we look back at our textual use case, we can see that both the librarian and the borrower can search for a book. The borrower might show up at the library saying, hey, I would love to see or read Moby Dick, and the librarian will help them find that book. We can therefore connect a line from search book to librarian and to borrower, so actually on both sides of our system. The next action we described in our textual use case is similar. The borrower checks out a book. I'll go ahead and write checks out a book or just check out book in a circle in the system. However, the librarian must be the one to orchestrate this. So we can connect check out book in the center of the diagram to the actors on both sides. Now, what about the process of returning a book? Because hopefully our borrower is not a thief and one day they will actually bring back the book to the library. What might a textual use case for this be like? Return book. A borrower goes to the library to return a book. They return the book in the Dropbox. Now, accordingly, in my diagram, I don't actually need to connect a line now from return a book to the librarian because you'll see, or hear in my textual use case, 
that the borrower is the one who returns the book and they return it directly to a Dropbox. No need for the librarian at this point. We'll look back at the diagram now and draw that line from the borrower to a use case that says return book. Okay, this diagram looks pretty fine and simple for now, but bear with me as I add two more keywords to this diagram, extend and include, although we'll just see extend here actually. Now we're going to cover two keywords that you could add to your diagram to talk about relationships between use cases. These keywords are extend and include. Honestly, you're going to use extend a thousand times more often than you'll use include, but we'll explain both of them briefly. Extend means that you're going to connect two use cases that depend on each other. However, the first use case could still happen without the second use case. This will become way more clear once we actually apply it to the library scenario. The second use case, include, is going to be used a lot less often. This means that in order for the first use case to happen, the second one has to take place. Again, this is very vague and we're actually not going to look at it in this course because you're never going to use it. Here we are back in our librarian borrower diagram. Let's look at how an example of extend might play here. For example, we said that when a borrower returns a book late, there should be some sort of late fee assessed. I can therefore add this to my diagram by just saying pay late fee. Now I'm going to connect that to the return book use case and connect them via extend. Let's translate this to actual words. So what does this extend mean here? This means that the system will assess the late fees automatically. Sometimes you can have a book that's returned without late fees being assessed, but you can't have late fees being assessed without that first use case in play. You can't have late fees assessed if somebody didn't actually return a book. Now we've ended up with a pretty comprehensive diagram involving a librarian, a borrower, and all sorts of book functionality, as well as an extend that says that there should be late fees imposed when someone returns a book. Great, so we've started with a pretty simple representation of our library system. This is the best way to start with UML and generally in the unified process. Start with the most simple thing and then seek feedback from other users or players in the system on what you've done, then iterate based on what they say. For another iteration on this system, for example, you could add the functionality of renewing a book for a borrower or a librarian ordering a book from a publisher to add it to the shelves if it doesn't exist already. I'll let you think about the best way to creatively do this. And in the next chapter, we'll check out how to map out this system as a domain model.